Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be doing a uh, an early lineup build and slate analysis for uh, tonight's DFS slate. It's very, very, uh, it's very full. Let's put it that way. Thirteen games, twenty uh, k for first in the MME contest, and I think twenty k for first in the in the big buy-in. And I will be playing both. And again, I'm going to go over my process on how I analyze the slate, which is going to be. It's really the way I do it with about a half hour to post time as well, but we're going to do it a little bit earlier. Let's take a little more time with this. And again, uh, this process is not 100% pure because if we knew it was 100% pure, then everybody would do it and nobody would make any money. Um, but this is what I've come up with and this is the way I play. And I think it's a good combination of you know getting a sense for what's going on with using projections and also using the the new various tools that are available uh, from the Saber Sim lineup builder to the contest simulations, which is really, you know, the wave of the future. I shouldn't even say wave of the future. It's the wave of the present. And, and you have to, you have to either embrace it or figure out a reason why you're not. Um, and that's just the bottom line here. Uh, so let's, uh, let's take a look at this. First of all, with any slate, you have to take a look at how the, the timing spreads out here. So you have two at seven, one at seven thirty couple of eights, nines, tens. Wow, this just goes on and on right until probably the obvious Detroit chalk in, or Toronto chalk. I don't even know who's chalk in these late games. Um, so really big slate, a lot of teams to choose from. Let's just say, I say this for the NBA sometimes, you win this slate, you deserve it, and you probably should get a bonus above the first place prize. So how do we deal with this? Okay, so first of all, let's get at least a handle on the uh, on the team totals. Okay, again, I we could go straight to the stack page, but I would like to at least get a sense for what's going on here. This, this, this. wild well, this is. Uh, that's golf. And we'll pull this up. And we'll see what we have here. So I'm, I'm assuming that someone's a four as far as an implied team total. First of all, it's good news. They have confirmed goalies for most of these games already. So anyway, uh, Rangers a three. All right, Boston's almost a four. That's something. Then you have Nashville to four. 4.1, Dallas a four, Edmonton not quite, Colorado 3.6, Vancouver 3.8. Wow, Toronto's nothing, 3.2, crazy. And then all the way at the end, you get Detroit 3.9. So a lot of teams to choose from. Uh, I hope I can build something good by hand. I have a feeling it's going to be a Sabersim type of slate, but let's kind of take a look. Before we get into the actual individual players, let's look at it from a stack perspective first. It's going to be, I guess, a little bit different. Um, and as such, I'm not completely prepared for it. Okay. So when we rate the stacks, we rate them by three different metrics, by raw points or raw, yeah, raw fantasy points, point per dollar, and also modified point per dollar, which is essentially the sheet's value score, which combines both upside regular fantasy points and, and point per dollar. Let's just take a look and see what we have here. Um, when we sort by raw points, you do see that Colorado and Edmonton stand out uh, over the rest. And you also see that Edmonton is not particularly high home, which is interesting. They're probably really expensive, but we'll get to that. Value stack, that's just by point per dollar. All right, so now you have Nashville, and remember, we noticed this before when we looked at the team totals, and Nashville was one of the teams that had a four team total. So if you have a high team total and you can get some of these guys in cheap, probably a good option. And then we see Boston here as well. Um, and we looked at Boston as having a good uh, team total. So, again, we're, we're, we're trying to, you know, uh, keep track of which teams are showing up time and time again. So. We have Colorado, Edmonton, and Boston over here. And then we have Nashville, San Jose, and Boston over here. And then we're looking at modified stack. 
we have Colorado, Nashville, and Boston over there. So Nashville and Boston are showing up uh, time and time again. So they're probably going to be the best combination of, of, of upside, value, and whatever. Um, I'm just guessing. So let's take a look now at the individual players. And what we're trying to do here is literally just, just, just take a step back from everything. Actually take a desk wheel back from everything. And then just look at these players and see if we can find guys from the same team that project in this top area. Okay. Because we could, you know, go straight to the stack tool, but this gives you a little bit of, of context of what's going on with the slate. Like for example, we're sorting everything by sheets value score over here. And the first thing I actually notice before we get into anything. So I, I do see some Nashville kind of staring out at me here. Um, but the other thing that I notice is that you have this one off, this Richard Raquel at 4K. And that's that's important. And, and the other thing that I see is you have uh, uh, Jake DeBrusque, 3,700 cheap. You have Mike Hoffman, 2,600, good little one-off cheap. So when you have these, these nice one-offs, you can – probably pay up for, for more stacks than normal. So first thing I see again, these two Washingtons, Nor uh, Forsberg and Yoshi, they're probably expensive, but uh, what else? Anything else in Nashville on this top board? Well, you have Nyquist and you will notice that line one, power play one, line one, power play one, line one, power play one. So that's big. Um, now, let's see what line this DeBrusque, he's on the two. All right, so it's now you can correlate him with these top guys like Pasternak or whatever. And the other thing you'll notice, as usual, is that McKinnon and Rantanen are, are two of the top five guys on the slate, and they're really, really expensive. So it is going to be difficult to get to them. Um, so I, I guess what I would try to do, if I were hand-building, is see if I can't just play Nashville. All right, and, and and see what that leaves me. I know that I'll be able to get, you know, a cheap couple of one-offs. But let's just see what we can do here. So let's pull up the the lineup builder somewhere. Uh, where's hockey? One sec. Sorry. So let's see if we can build with these Nashville guys. Now, the first thing I want to do before I do anything else is I want to put a cheap goalie in. So let's let's see who who rates at least decently. Um, 8,400, 8,500, 7,900. I don't even have that many goalies projected yet. Demco. Who's the cheap guy, the cheapest guy up here? It was some 7,900 guy. It was, uh, what was this? All right, so Igor from the Rangers, 7,900. Let's put him in. We'll probably be able to find something cheaper, but let's put him in for now. So let's put these Nashville guys in and see what they look like. So it was Forsberg, um, right? Forsberg, Nyquist, if I'm not mistaken, and Josie. Just make sure those are the cats that we saw up here. Forsberg. Um, where do these guys go? Forsberg. I could have sworn saw other Nashville guys up here. Am I hallucinating? Oh, there's Josie. Sorry. And who's the third one? Oh, Nyquist over here. And then we have Ooh, Tomasino, but he's on the second line. Well, this is not, not great, but Ryan O'Reilly would be the guy to fill in. So let's put him in. Oof, brutal. Uh, okay, so Ryan O'Reilly here. And now we're at 4,500 a man. So what, what can we do here? Well, first of all, let's plug in those, um, those cheapos that we talked about. So 
there was one from Pittsburgh that was uh, Raquel. And there was a 2700 from San Jose. Who was the 2700? Uh, Hoffman, right? So now we can actually do this. So we can actually build you know, fill this in a little bit better. So we have four Nashvilles. We have this one cheapo over here. We could probably get maybe a 4-3 with the Pittsburghs. Let's see. Where, where is Raquel here? Raquel is, he's on the first line. Oh, man. I'd love to be able to get to this, but I don't know if we can. What about San Jose? Compare him, or what about another Nashville player? Who's first? Here's O'Reilly. Yeah, Passanen's on the second line. You know, all these guys are not looking so hot. McDonough's on the first regular line, but the second power play, uh, second power play line. How about San Jose? Anybody good here? We have Zetterland. He's on the 2-1, and he's on the 2-1. Okay, so let's put Zetterland in. He's a defenseman. That's not going to work. What if we put in, like, an expensive guy? We could probably get away with this, right? Who is it? Like, who is the, uh, the center we liked here? Can we play Crosby? I mean, we could, right? Just make sure that I presume he's on this line. Let's just take a look. Yeah, Crosby's 1-1. One, one. He projects well enough. We like Wenzel, but... So now we have a 4-2-1, a and we need to play either a cheap Pittsburgh guy or it would be nice to play a cheap Nashville guy. I don't think we have it. You already have one defenseman. What do the Pittsburgh defensemen look like? Are any of these guys on the number one line? Probably not, right? Let me see what these Pittsburgh guys look like. That's why building my hands tough. Um, Letang would be the guy. Well, Pedersen is on the number one line. He's not on the power play, but hell, could be good enough. All right, so that's what we would come up with. It's not bad, right? Done worse than this. Come up with a 4-3 with Nashville, three Pittsburghs. You got the one-off from San Jose, a reasonable goalie. Hey, it's pretty good. Uh, and that's the first thing I literally do every single day, is see if I could build by hand with what's in front of me. Now, again, what's in what, – what, now, what is in front of me is going to change, you know, as we get closer to lock, right? Because projections will change, goalies will change, lines will change, whatever. But just to show you, you know, this is you can make this all work. Um, all right, let's pull up Saberson and see what we can get with that. And we'll see if we can. Uh, also do a little better with the contest sims. And what I love about hockey is that there's an incredible difference between what you'd be getting normally with your regular Saber score and what you'd be getting with your contest sims. So let's uh, upload the projections first. And let's see what we get. And we're just going to build, we'll build 50 lineups with no other, you know, restrictions. And it's important to know what we're looking at here. You know, for those of you who haven't watched all my, you know, my videos before, we're building 5,000 lineups to choose from. And of those, it, 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 we have to figure out how we want to rank these. Do we want to rank them just on, you know, median projected fantasy points? Probably not. We want to account for some degree of upside, I imagine. Um, so th those are the two first things we can look at. We look at straight projected fantasy points, see what those look like. But I don't even know if you even get any stacks out of them. 
and then we'll look at the Sabre score, which is a way to rank these lineups by your Sabre score, which is, I'll show you what that actually calculates to, but it's really just a combination of fantasy points, upside, correlation, you know, all that's all that stuff um, that usually promotes good GPP lineups. And then after that, we're going to actually run a contest simulation and show which of these lineups specifically are best tailored for those specific contests. All right. So let's see what we can come up with here. All of the Boston. That's what this looks like. So it's being rated right now by large slate by Sabre score. And just to see what that is, if you click on the I here and it says, the formula is 0.2 times sum of the projections plus 0.8 times the 95th percentile minus 0.5 of the average of adjusted ownership. Okay. So it's a fairly aggressive way to play. Um, it's not completely off the board, but it's a, you know, it's, a, I think this is a good construct to, 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 you know, to play lineups. From. Um, now, if you're going to play this, you'd have a couple of issues. Number one, you look at team stacks and you're getting 72% Boston. Is that okay with you? Uh, if so, we could fire it, but there's other things you can do to offset that. Next thing I'd like to look at is stack exposure. So I want to make sure that we're getting the types of stacks we want, like six O's, five twos, uh, four threes, pretty much. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to X out these stacks that are just kind of just not as likely to, to, to happen in general especially on a full slate. I mean, how, how do I put this another way? It's it's most likely that the optimal lineup does not have a pure stack, but you just don't know what, you know, which all the one-offs are going to be. So it, it's, it's easier to play just the, the regular normal stack. So we would hit apply and see if that changed anything. Uh, well, we'll keep one, three, three, two in just for kicks. And that makes still a good amount of Boston. So as I was saying, what you could do if you want is change the min uniques uh, to maybe something like three. And what that'll do is it kind of crunches everything together. It gets you a little more Nashville, a little less Boston. So this is actually a good set of lineups that you can put into your um, into your GPPs. Now, again, let's go back to stack exposure, make sure this all looks good. Actually, I don't want these four zeros. So we'll get rid of that. And whenever you make a change, you have to go back to make sure that, yeah, that your other things kind of stay the same. So let's uh, let's let's save these for now. I'm going to download these lineups from uh, from DraftKings. It does it automatically for you? Download down it downloads your slate to your you know wherever you download your files. So this is what I have from earlier. I have fifty lineups in the Tuesday twenty and one in the penalty kill. So what we're going to do is, well, first we're going to save them just so we have something. But then what we're going to do is we're going to save the contest sim data. And I usually do it from this screen. You can do it from other places. But as long as I'm doing this anyway, let's add the contest sim data. That'll show contest size, the percent to first, the percent of entries play, paid, and how many sims you want to run. And that's really important, you know, because we're trying to figure out what a field of lineups look like. So we have to make, you know, some kinds of, of presumptions. So let's click it. Let's click run contest sim. And this is why I love hockey because it's very rare that the regular Sabre score builds even remotely resemble the contest sim builds. And this is very different than some other sports, you know, basketball, it's very, very minor, the differences between your just regular builds and your contest set builds. Um, football is a little bit different. But when you get into sports like baseball and hockey, where you have massive correlation and such variance with the way scores are distributed, you know, like a goal is 10 points. It's not like the NBA where you just accrue points, you know, one at a time pretty much. So let's see what we got. Uh we ran the contest sims, and let's sort now by the Tuesday 20. We're going to sort by risk-adjusted ROI, see what it looks like. And 
Ooh, not much different. Very interesting. So even given the fact that Boston is probably, I guess, going to be, everybody's going to be able to get to them, even using contest sims, you're getting a, a good amount of Boston. Very interesting. Uh, let's uh, look at stack exposure. This looks pretty reasonable. Uh, keep these guys in here just for the hell of it. And now it's just a question of, if, is do you want to play all this Boston? Is that okay? Um, it, listen, it wouldn't be the first time that you pounded a team against Columbus and you came up uh, came up empty. Um, the other thing that you might want to think about, and boy, I should spend more time doing this in hockey, is the fact that late games in general are usually better to play because you could get take advantage of the late swaps. You know, like if if you know that you know your lineups look a certain way, if you have more you know games left to choose from, you can pivot and change things. Where if you get rid of all of your exposures early, you don't have that flexibility. So. That could be an argument to not play all of this Boston. So what would we do if we made Minuniques 4, for example? Okay, so this kind of crunches it up a little bit. So now you get a little less Boston, a little more Nashville. And I guess that makes a little bit more sense. So stack exposure still looks reasonable. Let's get rid of these. You know what? Let's get, let's get rid of all these. Let's get rid of all these Bow Wow stacks here. And let's go back to team stack. See what we got. Yeah, there you go. This is a. This looks like a good little, good little bunch of lineups here. So let's uh, put those in, and then let's take a look and see what the penalty kill looks like. Um, now again, I, I I thought that my that my uh, idea of playing Nashville and Pittsburgh like that, I thought that was pretty reasonable. So I don't know if I'm going to do this. I might just. Um, I might uh, I might live with what I was doing. Uh, you know, I don't know. I like I like this Nashville stack, and this one's actually very similar, but it didn't go for the Pittsburgh guys. I mean, for now we may as well just you know, with all these Boston's. I mean, for now we can keep this, but this is going to. This is going to require a little a little TLC. Now, again, this is, by definition, the best lineup for this contest, given the inputs that we put in. But, the, again, the inputs have quite a bit of variance. The sport is quite a bit of variance. So I'm not, uh, you know, this is completely unclear. So what this means, what, you may ask, does this mean to the average man? What this means is that, I mean, if I saw that no matter what I did, I was getting all this Boston, probably would listen and play Boston. Because as I mentioned, usually when you run the contest sims, you get kind of a different construct than, than you would if you're just running Saber sim stuff, um, but uh, Saber score stuff. But since you're getting Boston anyway in all, in all contests, in all formats, in all types of constructions, I think that you should probably listen. Um, that will do it for tonight's, I guess, process video. And all, this is exactly what I do, and it's what I'm going to be doing right up until lock. You have to actually check your – I shouldn't say right up until lock. I'm going to do it probably one more time. Um, and then after these games get going, probably after the – I don't know if I'm going to do a 750. Actually, I might. You know, like if Boston hasn't done anything in the first – nah, it's like giving only half an hour to Sorry, I got distracted, but I guess that was it. Uh, good luck tonight. And, uh, um, you know, if you want to show up, we're, we're at 6 p.m. We're doing live. but I'm doing live before lock, live before lock for the NBA. I don't know if I ever have time to really do the hockey um, just because the NBA just gets so nasty between like 630 and 7. But maybe one day I will. I don't know. Anyway, I uh, hope this helped. Uh, good luck, everyone.